The amazing vision capability of ChatGPT to both analyze and describe images is now available through a new API from OpenAI called GPT-4 Vision. And I wanted to see how well it worked on a real world business use case, like extracting text data from an image. So let's start by reviewing a small Python app I wrote that connects to the GPT-4 Vision API extracts data from an image and stores it in a structured file, in this case, a JSON file. Then we'll run some tests to see how well it, this API performs and how accurate it is. And we'll even push it a bit by trying to get it to process handwriting. And then we'll go through some next steps and further improvements you can do, as well as how you can combine the Vision API with other AI APIs to take some business processes to the next level. It's pretty exciting stuff. All right, let's start by jumping into the code. The GPT-4 Vision API is actually really easy to use and it works just like the other GPT APIs from OpenAI. The big difference is you have to pass in an image file and there's two ways to do that. So the first is you can just take an image file from your local system. So you can see this here. So you take this file and then we actually encode it. So you have to encode it to base64 to be able to pass it to the API. And so I have a method here that does that encoding. The other option is you can just pass in a URL from the internet. So you see this commented line here where we just have a, a big link to the JPEG. So you can swap this image URL variable to use either with this application. And I'll put a link to the GitHub in the description of the video so you can check it out if you want. Next, we just have to create a an OpenAI client. And the best practice here is to use the OpenAI API key environment variable. But if you wanna be lazy and just put it in the code, I've commented out a line here, you can do that as well. And then next, we just create our chat completion. And the model here will be gpt-4-vision-preview. And then inside messages, we set the role as user and we still wanna put in a prompt to go along with the image to tell it what to do with it. So what I'm gonna do in here is say return JSON object with data and say only return JSON, not other text. Because if you don't put this part in, it'll respond with text saying this is, here's a JSON object and other text that's not useful. This isn't actually the best way to do it. There's a better way using functions. I'll talk a bit about that later as the next step, but for now this seems to actually work really well. And then next we have to actually pass the image. So all you have to do is just put in your URL here. So in this case, this is gonna be the base64 encoded local JPEG that we're passing in. And that's it for our request. And now the response is gonna come back in this response variable. We have to dig into there to get the actual message of it. So you have to look inside response uh, choices at index zero dot message dot content. And that's where the actual response from GPT-4 comes back in. And an issue with not using a function and just getting the results back in the response, it returns with markdown formatting. So we just have a line here that simply gets rid of the, the markdown. And this seems to work fine. And then from there, we just convert it to a JSON object and save it to a file in our data folder. And we're gonna use the same file name as the image that was originally passed. So then you have kind of a pairing, you have the actual image file and then the .json file. And then simply print a message at the end saying we've, we've saved all the data. Let's just test it out. And for this example, I'm gonna use this invoice I have here. So if I open that up, let's just see how it handles a nice, simple, clean invoice. So we just run this. And there we go, it took about three or four seconds and it says JSON data saved to skynovainvoice.json. So let me up, open up side by side the original image and then the JSON file produced. And from everything I'm checking, it's got 100% accuracy. It's got every character correct. So what I'm really impressed with here is how it named these fields and how it structured this file. There's the heading here for business info, which is the, on the top left here. And so it broke those down to business name, business address, business city. It's intelligently structured this file to just match what's on this invoice. So it's structured perfectly. Every name's perfect. Really impressive stuff, considering we didn't tell it anything about the image we were passing in. We just asked for a JSON file. But let's bump up the complexity a bit because that was a pretty easy file to read. So I'm just gonna swap out the image URL for the one that's just the online URL link. And this file is handwritten, which is always tough for these systems to detect the characters. It's also been skewed a bit. I think it's been scanned. So it's not as easy to read. Okay, let's look at the split screen again. And again, it really got everything correct. So it really recognized what were sections and what was data. So for example here, it knew that application information was kind of a section of the of the document. So it put that as one level above, and then underneath that it had the, the nice field names again, full name, phone number, home address, mailing address, even some things that could confuse systems, like for example, the date here and the start date. These slashes kind of look like ones actually. So if it wasn't intelligent enough to know that it was a date, it might've put, just put a number there, but it identified it correctly and read it as a slash. And again, with the header row, it detected the header row here. So it didn't add that into here. It just said previous employment history and then put the different rows 
as they came in the document. A lot of intelligence here to make this another perfect document that represents this image. Super impressive. And the reason I'm so impressed by this is I've been involved in a lot of enterprise IT projects and they're big projects, like million dollar projects. And one of the big parts of it is the capture component of it, where all you're doing is just taking in images and grabbing the data off it. The fact that I can whip something up in Python, you know, it took me an hour or two and it's so accurate and so intelligent in the way it extracts the data really wasn't possible a few months ago. It really blows my mind how well it works. So what's the next steps here? One of them is I wanna use functions instead of using that prompt engineering to bring back the JSON object. So make sure you subscribe if you're interested in that video. And then the big next step is really around Ingentic systems, such as Autogen. I can see turning this app we built today into a data entry agent, and then have that talk to other agents in the workflow. You can have an accounts payable agent that looked at different accounting systems, figured out when to pay the invoice, if it had to pay the invoice. You have a fraud agent. This could all be overseen by a manager agent, which has quality assurance and make sure the process is running smoothly. There's so much potential for enterprise systems like that with AI now. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you in the next one.